My name is Belle. I'm 17 years old, and I know about suicide firsthand. That's why, when I saw the Netflix series, There's Reasons Why, I got angry. When I was 16, I was hospitalized. I struggled with self-harm, depression, anxiety, and an eating disorder. As a result of all these challenges, I now want to help others with their mental health issues. I know I'm not the only one out there that's been suicidal. Unfortunately, I am one of millions. However, I am also on a path to recovery and want to show others that there is light. I am back at my high school, doing well, and working with the NAN Project to promote mental health awareness. I strongly believe 13 Reasons Why does not portray an accurate picture of suicide, its causes, and certainly not how to prevent it. A young girl's suicide was glorified, blamed on others, and it did not show how mental illness affects 90% of those who die by suicide. I have been in that young girl situation, and every time I chose to engage in self-harm or other unhealthy behaviors, it was my choice, no one else's. I was so angry because the show targeted young people without providing information about the supports available and making sure that those watching know there is help. In many cases, suicide is preventable. The biggest problem is that we don't talk about mental illness or suicide because both topics are shrouded in stigma. We don't talk about suicide even though it is the second leading cause of death among young people. One in four high school students struggle with mental health challenges, yet we don't acknowledge the seriousness, the danger. Suicide is a permanent solution to an often temporary problem. We need to teach young people that suicidality, depression, and anxiety are real, tough life experiences, but they are both treatable and beatable. We need to teach people that they are bigger than their struggles and there are supports and resources young people can turn to. I now work with the NAN Project, an organization that provides mental health awareness and suicide prevention strategies in schools. Our goal is to normalize the conversation around mental health challenges so that students can support each other and get the help they need without feeling shame, fear, and despair. The NAN Project has put together these videos to offer a more accurate picture of the risks that can lead to suicide. These videos are designed to illustrate what mental health challenges can look like, attack the stigma, and offer information that can support someone who is struggling. We hope you take away a better understanding of mental health, and most importantly, the message that there is help and there is hope. Remember, mental illness is treatable and suicide is preventable, but only if we can openly talk about it. I can feel it starting sometimes and then everything around me starts to spin and I can't breathe. I'm not an anxious person. When I have a panic attack, it's because my brain just doesn't know how to regulate the way it responds to everyday pressures. Everybody have your book? Okay, we're going to read the Bible together. Okay. Raja, where's your book? Uh, I, I don't have it. Okay, this is an honors class. You need to bring your book every single day, and you need to bring everything you need for class. It's not acceptable. You're not going to be able to pass the exams if you don't have the content. Did you do your homework? Yes. Somebody want to start with first paragraph? Corey, please, thank you. I'm going to make a big request of you today. You said parking is so fierce with satisfaction. So I thought you ought to know something. I know about kids think I'm weird because I don't talk to other people. But I'm just using every bit of my energy to stay in control. Anxiety disorder isn't a character flaw. It's a medical condition. My oldest daughter, um, when she hit eighth grade, I discovered she was cutting herself and that was the beginning of our journey down the road of discovering about 
self-harm and other issues with mental health. I felt like I had nobody to talk to and nobody saw or heard my pain. And I sunk deeper and deeper into depression and ultimately I went to a negative coping skill to deal with everything that was going on inside of me and I turned to self-harm. I uh, eventually uh, started cutting myself um, as a release for some of these emotions. Uh, feeling that physical pain for me was a way to deal with the emotional pain that I was experiencing. This is a very misunderstood issue. What is it? Are people who do this crazy? No, they're not. Are people who self-harm suicidal? In the vast majority of cases, they're not. I'll tell you what they are. They're people who are hurting inside. They're not looking for attention. As a matter of fact, they've got a great means to hide what's going on with them. The biggest misconception about self-harm is that self-harmers self or people who self-harm are just trying to seek attention. That is actually not the cause. Self-harm is actually just a way of coping. You know, like in everyday life, some people cope with stress by eating food. Some people cope with stress by working out. You know, it's just, it's just a negative way um, of coping. And usually when people go that far to self-harm to cope, it means they don't know what else to do. In the last reporting period in Massachusetts, 11,000 people went to the hospital, either in an emergency room or were hospitalized because of self-harm. But I need to caution you, that number is probably very low. When we think about all the people who are self-harming who never went to the hospital, we know from surveys of local high schools that up to 16% of high school kids report that they have self-harmed. I felt ostracized, I felt different, I felt misunderstood, and I felt stigmatized because I, I was to a point. Um, there's only <clears throat> so much that a kid that age wants to talk to their parents about. Um, peers become very important to a high school kid. <laughs> um, and um, you know, my peers didn't know what to do. Coming from a personal experience, I think the most important thing that parents and friends can notice is if it's summertime, if it's hot, if it's warm, that you start to notice that they're always wearing long sleeves, they're always covering the skin, you know, that they're not going to pool parties or they're not going to the beach or this, you know, that, or if they do that, they're always just wearing long sleeves. Listening to the person, talking to the person, and the most important quality is to have patience. They didn't self-harm overnight, and they're not gonna get out of what seems like a big hole overnight. The stigma families feel around this can be crippling. There's shame and wanting to isolate. Don't let that stop you from getting the help you need. There are people out there that understand, and families can get through this. At the end of the day, I realized that one of the ways I make it through is I know what I'm fighting for. I feel like in life that you need to know what you're fighting for in order to make it, and that I know I'll be okay. I know that there's no demon too big that I can't conquer. And I got better. And I got married. <laughs> I bought a house. I had a, a kid. You know, I've gone from wanting to die and feeling completely hopeless and being in this fog to never being more excited about the future.
。以前，妈妈常说我很像爸爸。嗯，也不完全对。很长一段时间，我内心总是跌宕起伏，自己都不知道该如何应对。身边有很多我深爱的好朋友，但有时候我总会莫名其妙朝他们发火，而且我根本无法控制自己。会不会打？不是很厉害吗？连个球都打不好啊！哎，你也接不到啊？那你不要打了吧，就这样子吧啊。他为啥这么生气？他明明好好玩儿，多好、啊、内心深处的我希望自己是一个有趣而且聪明的乐天派。然而，对于曾经那些爱不释手的事情，我却失去了所有的兴趣。比如我的爱好，跟朋友们在一起，去学校。有时候，我只是觉得我不知道，很无趣。我就是感到生无可恋，就仿佛有一团阴云一直弥漫在我的四周。也许是中国传统文化的影响，没有人会讨论，也没有人真的理解这些事情，我感到很无助。没事，我觉得你最近情绪波动都很大，而且特别容易生气啊。我不知道哪里出了问题，我不知道哪里出了问题，我做什么都错，什么都是错的。你是不是生活上有什么问题？如果说你需要找人倾诉的话，我们很乐意帮你的。倾诉有用吗？我不知道从哪里说起，我不知道该从哪里说，我不知道说些什么好。如果说你觉得这样子没有对你来说没有用的话，嗯，你可以找医生，他们有专业的知识。在两年前的时候，我跟你一样。不知道该如何是好，并且情绪上完全自己失控。这个时候我就意识到，我需要去找专业的医生来帮我了。不管是他从哪个方面帮我，哪怕是药物治疗，我都觉得很有用的。真的有用吗？对啊，你看，是吗？可以，我就变得越来越好了。你要相信，现在已经一切会变得越来越好的。
Levántate. Hace rato que te estoy llamando, mi hija. Párate de esa cama. Ya son las 3 de la tarde. Vamos, vamos, párate. Muévete. ¿Qué es lo que te siente? No sé. No sé. Pues tienes que pararte de ahí, mami. No puedo. Vamos, no vamos. No puedo, no. Come, mami. Tiene que comer. No tiene deseo. No. Te sientes, eso es la depresión. Te sientes deprimida. Eso mismo vivimos nosotros con tu padre. Cuando estaba deprimido. Pero en esa época no había muchas opciones. Pero ahora tenemos más conocimiento de eso y te vamos a buscar ayuda profesional. Toda la familia te va a apoyar, no te preocupes, que eso me tiene muy multiplicado. Simply stated, there is no such thing as transgender. You're either XX or XY. That's it. Discriminatory laws designed, among other things, to prevent trans people from using the restroom of the gender with which they If identify. If your sex is what you say it is, then what prevents me from playing on a women's field hockey team? What prevents me from getting convicted of a felony and demanding to go to a women's field? declare something that 10 years ago would have been called multiple personality disorder? To declare that now something that is a civil right? America is a sick and perverted nation. Hey, what you think of that game last night? Oh, unbelievable. Charles uh, goal? That, or, that Kevin Hall. Uh, he's wicked good. Right. Nobody can cover him. Every time he's on the ice, he's a plus one. He's, you know, you're going to get one anyway. Amazing. What do we got? How many games for playoffs now? Four? Four, yeah. <sighs> What's that all about? He's just a friend from school. Okay. I, um... I went out with him last summer. 
wait, wait, me? Him? What are you talking about? I knew it. You're a freaking homo. You bang dudes. No, um, I'm just gay. Oh my god, just stop. Keep your mouth shut. I don't want everyone in here to listen to what's going on at this table. I bust my ass all these years to try to raise a decent family and this is how you turn out? Is this for real? This is so disappointing and disturbing. It's, it's, it, it's depressing. I can't believe my own son could turn out to be such a... such an ignorant, small-minded, and, and totally disrespectful of his own brother. Your mother and I are going to support him. What you choose to do, if you've got a problem with how he chooses to live his life, you keep it to yourself. I don't care what anybody else thinks, and, and you shouldn't either. Myth, confronting someone about suicide may increase the risk of suicide by putting the idea in their head. Truth, research has shown that confronting someone about suicide or bringing up suicide does not put the idea in their head. In fact, it can be very beneficial to have the time and space to talk about suicide, especially if the person has been keeping their own distressed thoughts and feelings to themselves. Often, asking someone about suicide can be met with relief, knowing that someone actually cares. Myth. Once a person decides to commit suicide, there's nothing anyone can do to stop them. Truth. People who are suicidal rarely want to die. They often see suicide as the only way to end the pain they're suffering in that moment. Often suicide survivors contemplate and waver whether they want to stay alive or end their life and up until the very last moment. Supporting a suicidal person, connecting them to the right resources, and inspiring hope are all important first steps to helping someone decide to live. Myth. Only depressed people are at risk for death by suicide. Truth. While it's important to support those suffering from depression since they are at a significant risk, suicidal thoughts can be seen across all kinds of people with or without a history of mental health challenges. Anxiety and substance use disorders are also factors that increase the risk of a person turning to suicide. As much as we look for sadness or feeling down, we can also look out for impulsive behaviors, irritability, and noticeable changes in substance use. Myth. Most suicidal people do not communicate their intent prior to an attempt. Truth. Most people considering suicide will provide clues in the weeks before an attempt. A person's communication about their suicidal thoughts may not be direct or entirely straightforward. This is why it's important to take notes of these warning signs. This can include a loss of interest in hobbies, isolation, saying things like, I wish I could go to sleep and not wake up, or you'd be better off without me. All these clues should be taken seriously, especially if you notice several of them. Myth. People who express suicidal intent are just looking for attention. Truth. This is a very dangerous misconception. Anyone expressing suicidal intent should be taken seriously and referred to professional help because most people with suicidal intent will communicate their plans to someone. Myth. If a youth tells a friend they are thinking about taking their life, they will also tell an adult. Truth. Most young adults find it easier to confide in someone their own age rather than telling an adult. It can be very difficult for most youth to tell adults how deeply they are hurting. In fact, they might tell a peer and make them promise to keep it a secret. But if somebody tells you that they are thinking of suicide or hurting themselves, you are not being a bad friend in telling an adult. You're showing you care and it's important that you tell an adult in order to keep that peer safe. Getting them the help they need can be the best thing you can do for them.
High school is one of the most anxiety provoking places and interactions you may have as a young adult. Um, it's the point in your life where you're trying to balance having a positive social life, work, and grades all at the same time. And all of this could make anyone crack under pressure. I felt like I wasn't getting it. I felt like I didn't really have anybody that I could turn to for anything, for something fun, for something difficult. I was just alone. When I first was diagnosed, when I first started experiencing anxiety, I was so scared. It was so overwhelming to feel all these things that no one else was feeling. But now, it's just something that's part of my life. It's something that I have to deal with the same way that other people have to deal with other health problems. It's those things that we're passionate about and love and allow ourselves that help us feel more alive. We need to find the things in our lives that make us feel more alive because life is not easy, but it can be enjoyable. What I do for self-care a lot of the time has to do with being mindful and taking some time to be calm. Um, meditation really works for me, guided meditation. I listen to different videos on YouTube that'll kind of walk me through. At the program I worked at, they really believed in therapy animals and the therapeutic effects it could have on the residents we had there. We had 26 and counting, and that was iguanas, ferrets, um, lizards, snakes, and all of these could have different therapeutic benefits depending on a person's treatment goals. There are peer support groups for young adults. It doesn't even have to be within a mental health system. You can go to a knitting group, a, a walking group. I think of groups because I think having community, having other people not being isolated is a protective factor. Physical exercise, for example, has had studies shown that when you're exercising or moving and being active, your brain releases endorphins and dopamine, and you physically feel happier. There, there are a lot of yoga groups that you can go to, and I know everybody, everybody suggests that, but really it has been one of the most amazing things I could have done for my well-being and my body. Mental illness can feel very binding, and you can often feel trapped. And when you express yourself artistically, it can feel liberating. And so it can make daily life so much easier for you. Artistic expression literally feels like a burden being lifted off of your shoulders. It's something that you do to feel better and it helps with your moods. And it's something that when I do, um, I just feel lighter. When I create art, I feel like I'm finally doing something with myself. One of the things that I need emotionally is to take some time to calm down and to do some deep breathing. That was somewhere that I used to go straight to self-harm when I was feeling that way. But now, when I feel those same kind of feelings bubbling up, I know, okay, I need to stop, I need to take a break, and I need to do some deep breathing in and out, and I'll be all right. What to do if someone you know is suicidal? If someone you know appears to be deeply depressed, is talking about suicide, or acting in a way that concerns you, here are three steps you need to take. First, ask. Be direct. Ask them, are you okay? Are you thinking about hurting yourself? Are you thinking about suicide? Be persistent. Sometimes these questions are hard to ask. If you don't feel comfortable, bring in another friend or someone who can ask the question. Second, listen to them. Don't approach the person with judgment. Avoid phrases like, that's awful, or you're not thinking about suicide, are you? Don't rationalize or say, you're not serious, or you'll get over it. Just listen. Be present and let them know you care. Help them find hope. Third, get help. Your friend may ask you not to tell anyone, but don't keep a secret about someone whose life may be in danger. Go with them to a favorite teacher, guidance counselor, parent, or another trusted adult with whom they may find comfort. Don't leave them alone. Stay until you can connect them with help. Remember to ask, to listen to them, and to get help. These simple steps could really save a life. The NAND Project created a set of videos 
13 Reasons to Talk About Suicide to open a constructive and helpful dialogue around suicide, its causes, and how we should respond to someone in crisis. Suicide is a serious epidemic that has the potential to affect anyone, especially young people. According to the Center for Disease Controls and Prevention, from 2006 to 2016, the suicide rate among children increased 64%. We need to address this issue. The NAN project works to tear down the stigma that enshrouds mental health challenges so that young people will not see suicide as the solution to their problems. We hope these films leave you with a clearer picture of risk factors that can lead to suicidal thinking as well as provide some support and education about how to reach out to a peer or loved one who is thinking about hurting themselves. It may seem intimidating to connect with someone in that type of crisis, but it is not as difficult as you may think. Ask the question, listen and care, and finally, point them toward help. Among the things misrepresented in the Netflix series were the adults within the schools who were portrayed as uneducated about mental illness and even as unhelpful and negligent. This portrayal is dangerous and for the most part inaccurate. Once students know how to reach out to their peers in crisis and ask the right questions, there are trusted adults all around who know how to help and guide students to the appropriate resources. It is critically important for schools to commit to providing support networks for all students. To facilitate this, the NAN project promotes mental health awareness and suicide prevention using a peer-to-peer -peer model, knowing that in times of need, young people most often turn to their peers for advice and support. Our mission is to use the school platform to open up the discussion and provide suicide prevention and give students, teachers, and staff the tools to help those who are struggling. Young people will inevitably come face to face with mental health concerns, suicide, and other challenges throughout their lives. But if they are well informed and empowered, they will be able to confront these obstacles head on. Youth have to know it is okay to not be okay. Mental illness can and must be treated in the same way as physical illness, openly and with compassion. Together, we can normalize this conversation and help reduce the likelihood a young person will turn to suicide. Thank you for taking the time to watch our videos, and remember, there is help and there is hope.